It's been so nice being home the past couple weeks. I hope you guys had a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I know I did spending time with my family and friends. I've been able to grind here the past four or five days at TCH and today I'm playing my last one-two session before heading over to Choctaw for the WSOPC events. So anyway, I'll see you guys inside. Hopefully we can end the grind today on a win. It's time to play my last 1-2 No Limit Hold'em 500 max buy-in session here at my home poker room TCH Dallas before heading off to Choctaw for the WSOPC circuit events. This session was a fun one. I didn't play a ton of hands, but the ones I did play were pretty interesting, so I hope you guys enjoy and learn something as always. Let's get into some hands. And one of the very first hands I get dealt, I look down at king nine of diamonds under the gun. We are a bit short-handed, so I thought it was okay to open. I raised the $10, only the big blind calls, so we're going heads up to a flop of queen 10, six with one diamond. My opponent checks it over to me. So this is a board texture that we aren't going to be betting our entire range on. As you can see, we're gonna be checking about 30 to 40% of our hands, and then the rest of our hands want to bet. And now let's talk about sizing. So because we're not always betting this board, this isn't a board that we would down bet for a small sizing. This is a board that we would mix some bigger bets and medium sized bets. So in this case, I am going to bet on the bigger side. We have a hand that blocks some of my opponent's strong hands like king queen. We also have a hand that doesn't necessarily always have showdown value as it is just king high. So if we bet and then get a hand like, for example, ace five of diamonds or ace three of spades to fold, it's a really good result. And in case our opponent wants to get sticky, we do have some backdoor flush draw equity as well as our gut shot. So I think this hand is good enough to put into a bet. So I bet $20. And luckily for us, we just take it down down with king high as our opponent folds. In this hand, under the gun opens to $10, and I look down at king queen offsuit in the low jack. Usually I would like to three bet this one. This player is pretty competent, so I decided to flat and see if we can take it away on certain board textures or just flop a good hand. So I make the call and we go heads up to a flop of jack nine seven rainbow. My opponent bets $10 into us, and I think we have a really great candidate to check raise, but being in position, we can also just flat with our two overs and gutters, so I do the latter. So we head to a turn card, which is bingo, the 10 of diamonds, so we bink the nut straight on the turn. Now my opponent checks. We definitely want to start putting money in the pot. We're not going to bet very small because our bluffs want to start putting pressure on all of his holdings out of position and our strong hands want to get value. So I bet $20. He makes the call, which is great news for us. And we head to a river card, which is a seven of hearts. My opponent checks yet again. There's not much we can get called by on this board considering there's a four liner to a straight. So I decide on a bet size of $50. My opponent doesn't think very long before putting in the call and we scoop a very nice pot. All right, so this is one of the more interesting hands I played for the night as there was a straddle under the gun to $10. However, I thought it was a raise under the gun to 10. I look down at nine, 10 of hearts in the cutoff. I make the call. The small line also calls and now it's back to the straddler and he puts in our raise, but it's a very big raise. He makes it $65. I thought this was very interesting. Red flags were kind of going off in my mind. I wasn't sure if this was a misclick or he meant to do this. I know this player, he's very competent, knows what he's doing. And so this just seemed a little bit odd. To me, it seemed like a hand that he really didn't want to play post, that he might've had a good hand, like some offsuit Broadway combination hands, possibly a hand like ace king or ace queen, of course. But I still think my hand bodes well against all of the hands that he's raising for this size. So I choose to call. The small blind decides to let his hand go. So we're gonna go heads up to a flop of nine, eight, four, rainbow. So we flop ourselves a top pair. My opponent leads into us for $55. I don't think there's anything to do here other than make the call. While we can deny equity from some of my opponent's bluffs, we still are up against an uncapped range, so I make the call. The turn is an interesting card. It's the Ace of Clubs. It's a really bad card if I think my opponent was raising with a hand like Ace-10 suited, Ace-Jack, Ace-Queen, Ace-King, etc. And my opponent continues telling his story and he bets $90. Again, alarm bells have been going off in my head this entire hand, so my opponent knows that the Ace is a great card for him to continue repping. I'm still beating some of his bluffs, like if he had a hand like king jack offsuit king queen etc my opponent can also have a hand like jack 10 suited for a semi bluff so i call hoping that my opponent will slow down on the river once i call if my opponent doesn't have an ace x combination he sure has to be concerned that i flatted with a hand like ace queen suited or ace jack some strong ace x combination the river is another eight and my opponent thinks and thinks i can tell he's deciding between a bet and a check and finally my opponent lands on a check 
Now we are super stoked to get to showdown. There is literally no reason to put in a bet here as we only get called by a hand that has this beat. And if my opponent is bluffing, it would give him room to jam over us. So I decide to check. My opponent announces king high and we scoop a very nice pot. My opponent had king jack offsuit. And after the hand, my opponent did say he indeed did misclick and did not mean to raise that big. If my opponent would have jammed or bet big on the river, I would have had a very tough decision, but I might have found a call. In this hand, I raise an early position to $15 with the beautiful queen 10 of diamonds. The low jack then three bets to $25. The button calls and now it's back on me. This is a very small sizing. We're never folding, so we're going three ways to a flop of jack six, five with all diamonds. So we flop the queen high flush. I'm gonna check it over to the original razor. He checks and then sadly the button checks back. So now we're headed to a turn card, which is a terrible card. It is the deuce of diamonds. So now we are losing to any ace or king of diamonds. Not only that, but it also will definitely slow down the action and be hard to get value from worse. I check and the original razor bets $25. The button also makes the call. So now we're headed to a river, which is the four of clubs. I'm gonna check planning to call any bet. So I check the original razor checks and the button says, I have a jack high flush and I say, I've flopped it and flip over my queen high flush. The original razor shows ace queen offsuit. So unfortunate that that fourth diamond rolled off or I think we could have squeaked out a little more value. In this hand, I start my battle with Derek. Derek is one of the amazing TCH live commentators at TCH Dallas. He is a super nice guy and a very good poker player. So in this one, he raises it up under the gun to $10. I'm in the low jack and look down at pocket tens. I think this hand can go either way. I chose to flat this time. The hijack cutoff and button calls. So we're going four ways to a flop of 10, seven, six rainbow. So we flop top set on a pretty dynamic board. Eric checks and I check, planning to check raise if anyone tries to bet. We have a great hand to do so. It might induce a player to start either bluffing or betting with the worst hand, but unfortunately it does check around. The turn is a queen of diamonds, so this is a pretty dynamic card as it brings in a flush draw and a lot more straight draw possibilities. Now it checks to me, this time we're gonna bet a little bit on the bigger side to deny equity and get value for our set. And now any queen X combination is going to have to call us, so I bet $45. The gentleman to my left calls and Derek calls, so we head three Three ways to a river card, which is the three of spades, it doesn't change a whole lot. They check it over to me and while I am losing to some hands, it's very unlikely given the action. So I'm definitely gonna go for value as we have middle set. I bet $100 and sadly they both fold, but we do scoop a nice pot and we're running pretty well. In this hand, Derek raises an early position to $10. I look down at King Jack offsuit in the cutoff. It's not really a great hand. You don't really want to flat it, especially facing an early position open. So I decide to turn this one into a three bet bluff, given that we block ace king, kings, pocket jacks, ace jack, hands like that. So I raise to $30. We don't need to go any bigger than three X being in position with no other dead money in the pot. He makes the call out of position. So we go heads up to a flop of ace jack eight rainbow. He checks and now this hand is a little bit better than in the middle of our range, we do have a decent hand and we can deny equity from a lot of other hands. So I bet small and make it $15. Derek doesn't think very long before putting in the fold. And so now we move on to round three, me versus Derek in this next hand. Wait till you see what happens. In this one, I play the toughest hand of the night as I'm in early position and I raised a $15 with pocket queens. Early position calls and then Derek is in the big blind and decides to put in a three bet to $75. I know Derek is a very capable player. He doesn't have to have just nutted hands when he three bets in the big blind, but he uses a great sizing here as he needs to bet a little bit bigger being out of position in the big blind. Being in position, I like to flat and keep his range a little bit wider. So instead of putting in the four bet, I decide to call the 75 and then the player to my left fold so now we're going heads up to a flop. The flop is ace eight five with two spades. Eric being out of position here can have some check raises in his range, but he can also lead here with a lot of his range. And he can also lead small here for a pretty small size, about 33%. And that's exactly what he does. He bets $55. I can't fold just yet as I'd be very exploited if I just folded to one bet just because an ace came on the flop. So I make the call. 
The turn is a very interesting card. It's the Ace of Diamonds, so now there's two aces on board. And this is where things get really tough. Derek decides to keep firing for $185. At the time, my thoughts were, Derek is going to check this card a lot of the time, especially if he has a hand like Pocket Kings, for example, and some of his bluffs I guess can continue. However, when I call the flop and I call his 3-bet, he does have to be worried I have some strong hands in my range, like for example, Ace-King offsuit or Ace-Queen, as I would probably 4-bet Ace-King suited. So when he continues firing here, I think it's very, very strong. At this point, I'm narrowing his range to Ace-King offsuit and Ace-Queen, or some bluffs. Even some of his Ace-X combinations that might want to polarize as a bluff preflop still make a strong hand. Either way, this is a great bet by Derek because if he's bluffing, this bet leading into me out of position when a second ace comes looks really fishy and if he has value, well, it's making me want to call now that the ace paired so he probably knows he can still get value if I have a hand like pocket kings, queens, jacks, tens, etc. Although I'd probably start folding tens at this point. I don't know a ton about Derek other than he's a professional poker player and he commentates and gives great commentary so I know he's a good solid player. This line is really strong. So I reluctantly put in the fold and I slide in my cards and later on I asked Derek what he had and he was kind enough to tell me. He said he had ace king with a king of spades so he had a very very strong hand. Very well played, almost got me to call another bet but I'm very glad I made the right decision. In one of the very last hands I played for the night, there's a limp in the low jack, and I'm next to act with queen jack offsuit in the high jack. I raised to $15, trying to isolate, but this plan does not work as I pick up five callers. So we're going six ways to a flop of king 10 8 with two spades. So we flop ourselves an open ender. It checks all the way around to the button, and he bets $45. I'm the only one who calls, so we're going heads up to a turn card, which is another king. Now there's a double flush draw on board. I check and luckily my opponent jacks back. The river is the ace of hearts, so now we bink our straight. I think it's highly unlikely my opponent has a strong hand at this point given the action, so I have to go for value and I put out a bet of $75. My opponent doesn't think very long before putting in the fold and we get to end this session on a very positive note. All right, we were in the game for 500, out for 1,075 for a profit of $575 pretty freaking sweet way to end this week because I'm headed to Choctaw. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog and hope you guys learned something. If you liked it, would you please do me a huge favor and go all in and like, comment, and subscribe. It would mean the world to me. We are just getting started. It's only up from here. The year is just getting started. So many exciting things, trips coming up. I'm even headed to Panama in February, you guys. It's gonna be a sick year. Can't wait. I'll see you guys next time.